everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from steamy hot Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan, uh, the world is ending. And <laughs> what to do about it. It is. Uh, that is a fact. In can't. so many ways. It's actually, like, in so many ways, the world does feel like it's ending. It feels like it. It feels, well, or like life as we knew it seems yeah. to be gone. Well, and literally, like, if the Christian end of the world came and happened this year, I'd be like, yeah, it's 2020. That's about right. <laughs> seems about right. <laughs> seems All right. about right. Yeah, you know what? One of, you know what the worst part about that would be? Finding out that Christianity was right all this time. <laughs> not eternal damnation? <laughs> no, no, that would not be the, the big, the big blow to my system would be, what? That piece of nonsense? <laughs> piece are of you, shit. Are you out of your mind? That yeah. was the right one? Yeah. It would be very, very disconcerting. Yeah. <laughs> of, of all the religions, that turns out to be the right one. Right. And then which one, right? Right. It can't just yeah. be blanket Christianity. Sorry. Well, yeah, they're mostly. They're, I mean, they're mostly the same, and theologically speaking, anyway. Well, it's just it's either. just grumpier and less grumpy versions. <laughs> All right. Well, Dan. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start with a story about the. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Mormons? The Mormons. Um, Them from which we done sprung? Headquartered right here in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Uh, they have, the church leadership has uh, recently, they sent out a, a letter to all the members in Utah. So this wasn't like directly from like the president of the church the prophet was, himself yeah it wasn't even from like the quorum of the 12 Dan. this was from the area presidency okay um, so these are the, this the is assistant sort of to a, the regional manager was what you're saying <laughs> no literally the regional manager oh yeah it's the regional manager <laughs> it's That's literally right. the regional manager uh so <laughs> the regional management of the church of jesus christ latter-day saints sent this letter out asking uh, members to of the church to wear masks in public yeah, uh, and to quote be good citizens and to help promote the health and general we welfare of all um, now, now before before you go any further I want to point out that Mormons in general are obedience driven humans they are it's an authoritarian uh, yeah. religion yeah. It is one, it is a top-down, do not question the authority religion. Right. But in a lot of ways, sometimes I think the church knows when to be quiet and knows when not to be, right? Like, well, yeah. normally they say things that they know are going to go over well, right? Yes. Um, this, um, if you know anything about Utah and our general response to COVID-19, uh it hasn't been good <laughs> has yeah. not been good uh in fact um in a lot of ways uh it's been problematic the, we we've got that strain of like right wing nut job here in that 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 uh it doesn't want to be told what to do right yeah um, it's in fact and this is choice. I actually saw something on a related story that had a picture of a mask that somebody had written, um, my body, my choice. Yeah. <laughs> and I was they like, think, oh, they the think they're so clever. <laughs> Nonetheless, um, so, um, and of course, you, the Utahns of that stripe tend to be Mormon, right? Uh, and, uh, so this hasn't necessarily gone over well. Uh, we, basically we haven't seen more people wearing masks because of this, this, the, the church urging people to wear <laughs> masks. What has caused people to wear masks are national chains like Kroger and Walmart, et cetera, and Target all saying that you have to wear a mask in their store. Okay. Well, okay. finally, finally, right um and uh salt lake it, county as soon as salt lake county was allowed by the state 
to to put in a face mask like rule like law a right? mandate a mandate um order i guess actually probably um there was almost like immediate compliance it was amazing like it was overnight like it wasn't 100 percent, obviously but <laughs> right. like the places that i go um it, it was a noticeable and dramatic difference right I and mean, that's that's what these things do you or you place an order you put an order in place and people comply well nonetheless didn't work with the lds church they they seemingly right. are out of touch with their their membership on this um this article and we've seen this multiple times we saw mm -hmm. this when the church provided you know when they brought a bunch of missionaries home mm -hmm. and provided instructions for people yeah. how to you know what they were to do when they picked their missionary up which were summarily ignored yeah i honestly th it almost is like the church feels like at this point to be the crotchety old man on the block right or like yeah. your grandparents right that like right maybe not the current that, that might actually be wrong just your grandparents who just are like oh come on you're just you don't know what you're talking about right that's almost like their reaction the membership's and, reaction at this point uh, of just right. like they uh, they don't know what they're talking about and if grandpa like really gets mad and insists everybody will roll their eyes and comply but like <laughs> right which is going to church they have to wear masks right. when they go to church right it's so funny but I they just, won't do it they will not do it when they're just out in public on their own it's um, amazing and uh, you know when this when that news hit i of course went to very mormon sources like the deseret news which is the church-owned newspaper mm -hmm. yeah. and i went i jumped right to the comment section because i wanted to see what was happening? Are they accepting this or are they rejecting it? Because it's literally like the the organization that they believe the most mm -hmm. telling them to do something that they have four squares set their mind against. Mm -hmm. And it, it was shocking to see how many Mormons, because Mormons don't disobey the brethren. They don't. Yeah. So, well, so many Mormons going, well, this isn't from the prophet, so I don't have to listen to it. Yeah, looking for it was, any excuse, right? It was amazing to me. Yeah. <coughs> now, there's actually a thing, I think, where, um, and I, I, I'm, I, I wonder what you would think about this, but just, it's almost like their political identity might be more valuable to them than their religious identity. I don't think they separate the two. You, I don't. They clearly are. Be, in this well, one, they when clearly when are because their politi their political <laughs> sensibility right now is to yeah. is that by by wearing a mask you'd be giving in to the leftists, right? Right. And right. that you that you that, and that you would be betraying your your true blue, you know, your conservative, your you know, Republican ideology. Bona fides. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so. I think that the, their political ideology beat out their Mormonism. Yeah, it's kind of shocking. Yeah. It's kind of shocking, to be perfectly honest. So, and we're speaking pretty blanket about the Mormons right now. Like That's because they are a unified <laughs> single entity. <laughs> it's the Borg. It is the Borg. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the morgue. It's the morgue. <laughs> Resistance is futile. Um, obviously, there are sort of, you know, not crazy Mormons who are out wearing masks, but it does feel like the vast majority of like Mormon suburbia is uh, <sighs> is just not it, caring about this at yeah, all. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, it's it it just means that like this plague is going to be in Utah, problematic in Utah for a long time. Yep. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take us from Utah to uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. Ah, see, you thought I was going to do the other Cleveland. No, Tennessee, <laughs> uh, where uh, where lies the Westmore Church of God, uh, which is a, a a nice big church. One of those. I don't know if I don't know if you'd call it a mega church, but it's huge. And uh, hmm. and they were one of these churches that decided they were going to have. In person, here's the thing, I feel for them. They had, they were opening up, they had the grand opening of a brand new building that they had built oh. for their church. Okay. 
But then this goddamn COVID got in the way. Oh, well, man. they weren't going to let that stop them. So back in May, end of May, they decided they were going to celebrate this grand opening anyway, and they were going to have a huge in-person gathering with the choir and shoulder-to-shoulder people, and uh, I yeah. guess they were going to be protected by the blood of Jesus, and that was <laughs> it. How do I get some of that? Right? Yeah, well, t- turns out, doesn't work. Uh, this was, I mean, we've known this for a while. There have been m- so many reports of pastors dying from this thing. Mm. Uh, but in, in this case, they got together one, uh, actually twice. They had That was on May 31st, and then on June 22nd, they had another huge in-person gathering. Um, you know, we're talking a few hundred people, several hundred people. Well... June twenty fourth, which was two days after that, the ga- the second gathering, uh, their lead pastor announced they had a COVID nineteen case in the congregation. Oh no! Yeah, that's oh, sad. No. Of course, then the day after that, oh no, twelve more confirmed cases. Oh no! Yeah, can <laughs> you guess where we're going with this? <laughs> guess how many they re- they're reporting now. You can't tell because they've stopped keeping track. It was too depressing. They couldn't Literally, count that high. They said <laughs> we gave up on keeping count. It At was what, too. <laughs> but what number had they hit? Uh, I I don't know, but it, that's it just seems, a dodge. You know, because it's one if, thing to be like we stopped counting at 500, right? Because then that gives right. you like an idea. But if it's just like right. oh, we just gave up after 20, you know? Yeah. Like no. Uh, the, the the pastor said in a radio interview, quote, I do not know the exact number. I don't even know. I wouldn't even know within a range. I do know that is way too many. And we've got to and we've got to live and learn from it. And so we gave up on keeping account. <laughs> we have to live and learn. All right. Well, and they uh, they have learned a little bit. Uh Pastor Page did say that uh, when he was asked if he had any regrets, he said he wished he had a- he had more strongly stressed the importance of wearing masks. Or why don't you try wishing that you had not fucking had the meetings like idiots? How about that? <laughs> the ding dongs. Oh it's uh, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. The it was an outcome nobody could have predicted. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't know how anybody. Need, you would have needed like I don't know, like maybe a prophet. <laughs> yeah, you know, somebody who... special, you, like yeah, magic. Yeah, if if you had had own... some sort of fortune teller, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could have maybe Tarot been cards. able to see this coming. <laughs> uh, amazing. All right. Well, Dan. Yeah. Um, with everything going on in the world, uh, it is still surprising to me that, uh, airplanes are flying. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, I don't know why. I mean, I know why, but I don't know I mean, why. It just seems yeah, like it, such a bad idea. Before um, COVID-19, I would have said people got to get to places, <laughs> but do they? I don't no. think so. I don't you think don't so. got to get to places. You're okay. Yeah, we, we, we've, we've got FaceTime and Zoom. and Yeah. <laughs> so Stay just, put for half a minute. Jesus. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to go anywhere. Uh, anyway, uh, but they are flying. And um, a recent flight leaving uh, Seattle, the Seattle, the SeaTac airport, right, um, <laughs> had to turn around. Uh, because a man uh, had become uh, belligerent and physically aggressive uh, while while the plane was still climbing. Um, oh God! This was very early off in the in, in the in the flight, and um, the article that I read about this it doesn't mention the real true like nugget that I I thought was amazing about this. It 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 only says that um, he okay so. Th- th- he was walking in the aisle and shouting that he would kill everyone on board in the name of Jesus. I was like, oh, yeah, that's I, I'm going to watch this video. Right. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> now, he was wearing a face mask. So good on him. <laughs> right. Like he's well, he's, he's you may want to kill everybody on board, but you don't want to get him sick. 
<laughs> it's um, just rude. So I watched the video, and this is the line that stood out. I and I had to write this down because, it, oh. like I said, <laughs> okay. it wasn't in, in the article. Um, so it's, uh, it says, "I will kill everyone on this plane if you do not accept that Jesus was a black man." So what? Oh, this this guy, he was <laughs> he was worked up about. <laughs> jesus he, about white jesus he was pissed this is off a, about this, white jesus is this and the a, racism a, it's a white guy this wasn't a black guy no this was a young white guy and and i kind of like when i saw him like i was like oh oh he's just like, like kind of a early 20s kid like who's yeah. obviously he, and he looked kind of clean cut and i was like he's just recently had some sort of break with reality like there, there's something that just broke in this kid's head so it's actually kind of really sad um yeah. but I, um, here's what I, I here's what i will say yeah these millennials and zenials have taken cancel culture too far when they've decided to cancel an entire plane <laughs> of people <laughs> i just feel like <clears throat> You guys, let's dial it back a, a notch <laughs> when it comes to murder of an entire plane full of humans. I know. And it seemed like he was yelling. I, it looked like he was yelling this at a black man, which is also kind of <laughs> just, just the, the whole thing is just, I mean, I don't know. I These stories, I always kind of feel like I, I want to bring them up on the show. And then like once I do, I'm always just like, that wasn't a fun one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay, yes, the, he's probably suffering from some oh, sort of mental illness, me so and sad. and that's not very fun. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I, at least it's a at least it's a novel approach to your psychotic break to to, to decide that you're going to with no apparent implement for actually no, killing everyone on the he, plane. Uh, it was it was clear he had no weapon. A uh, couple of passengers, um, two big dudes um took him down um Just sub or sat, him, him. sat him down more than anything okay. um and let me tell you dan this is also what was probably more disturbing than anything is there were that plane was packed yeah there were so many fucking people on that plane now they were wearing masks uh, most of them there was somebody in the in the video that wasn't um but it's just like come off it people. wow Anyway, there there's you go. so much that bothers me in that story. Well, you know, it's this is why we can't trust the libs. <laughs> so. Anyway, okay. Uh, I am going to close out with some good news. Uh, honest to God, holy shit, good news. Okay. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, apparently, if you look at, at Humanist International's list of... Uh, they call it the the freedom of thought report uh they which lists which ranks uh countries by how how well they do respecting freedom of thought freedom of religion that sort of thing okay sudan does not rank high mm, or right. or i mean they are like number 187 out of 196 they oh god they are about as low as you can get uh without being saudi arabia arabia <laughs> Right. Uh, the, this is a place where uh, a lot, where, for instance, being, if you leave Islam, the punishment for that is death in this place. Or it was. Because here's the thing. Uh, they have been considering for a, a while f fix it, bringing some of their laws uh, in line with uh, sort of international human rights uh, ideas. So there's good news. They are apparently uh, some reforms have become law, which include uh, non-Muslims being allowed to drink alcohol in private, which uh, which was in apparently private. not okay. Yeah, yeah, and they can't do it out in front of everybody. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> But a very but it, but you won't be arrested for it. You won't be put in jail if you're caught doing it. Okay. Um, where do you get the, this stuff? Where do where, where, uh, you bring it? You, you from far away? Duty free shop on your yeah, way exactly. back into the country. Okay. Yeah. All right. I still wouldn't do it if I were you. If you're going to travel to Sudan, 
I don't know how how quickly I'd test any of these, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, theoretically the law is that you can that non-Muslims are permitted to drink. Um, there is no more apostasy law, so uh, people who leave Sudan will probably only suffer, you know, Sudan horrible or beating. Islam? Oh yeah, sorry. People okay. who leave Islam yeah. in Sudan right. will probably only suffer the you know the repercussions of everyone they know you know probably rejecting them and and maybe being beaten and yeah and but you can have a drink right hey <laughs> so let me give you something for that eye and uh here drink this um there will be no more public floggings apparently that was one of the punishments that they would that they would dole out only, and only private floggings probably right exactly mm -hmm. right yeah. floggings in 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 uh in the comfort of your own home <laughs> um women do not need their husband's permission to travel alone with their children so oh, that's God. that's a good thing progress and, <laughs> so and this progress. is a this is a big one i think okay they're banning female genital mutilation that is a big one that's an that's an important one so i huh. feel like those are those are not baby steps in my mind. Those are very big, important steps that are happening in Sudan. Uh, apparently, there's a, a the, their new minister of justice, Na, Nasruddin Abdulbari, uh, is uh, is making waves. He's a young guy. He's only forty one. <laughs> that's that's suddenly young now. That feels very very young. Uh, yeah, so so amazing stuff. That's that's really cool. Real real progress happening. I mean, they got a long way to go. Yeah. But big steps happening there. All right, well, that's that's good stuff. Dan, yeah. Happy for Sudan. Um I'm going to head on down to Brazil for our next story. Where Oh, I like it. We're yeah. getting so exotic. Woo! Where um I it sounds like basically one of their like their top beer brands, um, which is uh, the name of it is Brahma, um, oh. has drawn the attention of a group of um, activists, right? Who are have been pressuring. You actually talked about, I think, this group. They're sort of pressuring groups to uh, remove their re their religious appropriation from. Uh, their their oh, business, yeah. right? So, like you were yeah. talking about in the context of like like nightclubs, right? That yeah, were... people putting up an image of a, a, a giant Buddha statue in the middle of the exactly. club because they right. thought it was funny or cute or whatever. Or no, really fucking cool. That's what they thought it <laughs> right, was. Right, right. That's um, true. Well, uh, now Brahma, right? Which uh, yeah, it, it is the name of a Hindu god, um, right? Uh, is is drawing the ire of this uh, same group. I believe it's probably the same group. Um, and uh, they want them to change the name of their beer. Uh, this yeah. is a, a, a brand that is owned by AB InBev, which is a massive... Oh yeah, massive global conglomerate it, of, of right, beer totally. brands. Um, owned, they they own like uh, Budweiser, Bud Light, Corona, Stella Artois. It's a Belgian right. company um, right. that that bought Anheuser Busch a while back, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> big. The, uh... These people are big. That's what the AB is for, actually. Right. Uh, but nonetheless. Um, Brahma was first produced. This is not a new brand, right? It was first produced in 1888 by Compania Cervejada Brahma. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, yeah, my Portuguese. The, Bra the the Brahma Beer Company. Great. Yeah, um, and um, and yeah, and they basically, I and I, I looked. I was like, well, like, are they referencing, like, in their marketing? this hindu god right yeah it doesn't look like it and the, the labels don't have anything to do with it um and according to lucas rossi who's the head of communications for ab and bev's latin america subsidiary um the beers were actually named to tribute uh joseph brahma <laughs> oh, oh dear. An, an englishman who invented the draft pump valve <laughs> 
<laughs> when, hey. Not the Hindu creator God. <laughs> Which just, and literally, no, again, doesn't look like they reference that at all. They also don't reference this Englishman either. Oh. Uh, it okay. literally is just big, bold letters that say Brahma. Now, Joseph Brahma is spelled slightly differently, but apparently uh, for branding purposes, uh, to make it work better with the Portuguese language, they just moved the H from one spot to another. Um, oh. Which I don't know how likely that's, that's, that sounds as an excuse. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. It may be an excuse. It might there, be a little bit of an be, excuse. They, they might, might be bullshit. They really clever here with their, their little exception. But it really draws into question, like... Even even let's say the whole inventor of the tap whatever uh, story uh -huh. is just bullshit, right? right? And for whatever reason, somebody in 1888 decided to name a beer after a Hindu god. And then subsequently, the brand has like doesn't reference that god at all, right? The, is it still like it's a name at a certain yeah. point, right? Like, yeah. don't you think you guys can just like... Like it's not like they're they're marching the Hindu god around touting their beer. It's it's right. exactly what you would expect for beer marketing for a major national brand. It's a bunch of women in in bathing suits, right? Well, I can see how that might be also like offensive. I don't know. Frankly, what it should happen is somebody should produce Jesus brand beer. Absolutely. And and make their mascot be Jesus and just and just go all the way with it. Yeah, I think so. Like, I mean, you could try you could try Muhammad beer, but I don't think you're going to do well. I think something bad is going to happen. Just to you. don't include his image, <laughs> a picture of and him, and you'll be fine. Like that's all <laughs> that's all the Muslims care about. Yeah, that's true. Je well, yeah, there you, you go. could really have some fun with Jesus beer, right? I think yeah, or maybe it's Jesus wine. And it's made of of water. <laughs> Let's Add your own Jesus. It's just a water. It's just bottled water, and it's called Jesus wine. That would be funny. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, uh, I since we're getting all kinds of uh, crazy exotic, I'm going to take us to the mystical lands of Turkey, oh. where uh, where a, th a thing has just happened. Now. I, I don't have you heard of the of the Hag, Hagia Sophia Hagia Sophia Absolutely. I don't know how it's pronounced Absolutely I think right. it's Hagia Hagia Yes correct Yeah Um absolutely like I uh, I remember this from Hi. like um um art history class in oh, yeah. like in in college Absolutely It's a stunning stunning building yeah. and what it it's it was a cathedral originally um 6th correct. century Byzantine. Yes uh, went back a long ways, and it's freaking gorgeous. Yeah. Now, uh, during the Ottoman Empire, uh, Istanbul was, of course, uh, taken over by uh, Muslims. Was it Constantinople? And, was it? Oh, my God. Yes, fine. <laughs> At that time, it was probably Constantinople. <gasps> now it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. <laughs> so if you have a date in Constantinople, you'll be waiting in Istanbul. <laughs> Uh, anyway, they turned it into a mosque. Right. So for for centuries, it was uh, it was a, a is a, a, a why can't I think of the word? An Islamic person Muslim. is Muslim. Yes. Thank you. It was a mosque. It was like Hindu. No, damn it. That was the last story. Uh, anyway, so it's been a mosque for a long time, and then for the last eighty six years, it has been. A museum. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that that's a great idea, uh, yeah. and Turkey's Turkey's been largely, uh, at least their government has sort of been mostly secular for a minute, even though the country is still very much a uh, a Muslim country. Now, things are a little bit different. President uh, Erdogan, I don't know how Recep Erdogan. How do you say his name? Just I, just I focus know, on the Erdogan. Erdogan we is all know good who enough. you're talking about. Yes, indeed. Anyway, uh, he, he he's getting very uh, very Donald Trump about everything over there, and really playing <laughs> to the uh, to the Muslim crowd, hmm. and has pushed through a thing through the courts to make uh, to to stop it from being a, a museum, 
and now it is back to being a mosque. Wait, it is? Yeah. It is now a mosque again. It's a mosque again. Oh, fuck. So, yeah, that's a... Oh, fuck. Why did he do that? It's just such an ugly, stupid idea, in part because what it stood as as a museum yeah was a uh a coming together of the religions you yeah. know was, the whole idea was this use you know yes it was a church and then it was taken over by you know the muslims and now and then it was a thing but they're acknowledge- they were sort of acknowledging all of the history of it at the same time well now it's back to mosquing and uh oh my god and, does, and what does we're that sort mean of square for one again all of the um I guess no. Like they did. They, no, stuff? they uncovered um, a lot of the old um, mosaic work, which oh, yeah. was pictorial, right? But mosques, oh, you can't yeah. oh, have that's... Um, any kind of imagery like that. Let me. I'm right. looking at pictures. Yeah, here's like um, I can't. That looks like the um, the Holy Family right there. I think. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I'm that's looking at a picture Mary, where. You, that's with Jesus, yeah. um, ba- like baby I Jesus. I don't have any word actually on whether that stuff's coming down. Um, uh, well, at this hopefully point. they or, do. Or, they just cover it. You're right. <laughs> so yeah. at some future date, it can be uncovered again. Um, I love I love the legal trick that they used to get this uh, through the court, it. which was that they claimed that the legal ownership of of the building was to Sultan Mehmet the second Ottoman of the Ottoman Empire in 1453 <laughs> and therefore they had no right to turn it into a into, into a, uh, a museum oh my god uh, needless to say Orthodox Christianity is in a rage yep. uh, the yep. you know Pa- Patriarch Bartholomew is c- claimed that this will turn millions of Christians across the world against Islam, like that hadn't already happened. <laughs> um, and Patriarch Kirill of the Russian Orthodox Church uh, said that it was uh, call- he called for prudence and and the preservation of the quote current neutral status. Yeah. No, this is this is clearly intended to be a provocative act yeah right like you it don't a, you don't do this if you want you know your people uh getting along with each other <laughs> right yeah this is definitely a poke in the eye and uh and, oh, and a provocation God. so that's fun uh, don't you love it when uh people of different w- with different imaginary friends decide to fight over it because oh, who knows what will happen? Could be nothing. Could be millions of people lose their lives. We'll see. We'll just see. You know, it's 2020. Anything could happen. <laughs> Anything could happen. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to send us a prediction as to what might happen when when, uh, when, any, when everything goes to shit, please write into us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGIA Atheist, and click the like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It is a closed group, but we will let you in. Also, find us on Twitter at TGI Atheist. Stick around for more show. Hey, Dan. Hey! So, Pat Robertson is officially an old man. <laughs> he is. Oh, and he's starting to sound like it, too. Yeah, you guys that's listening. What I, you'll, that's, yeah, absolutely. You'll hear it. This guy is, is, he doesn't have much longer on this earth. But while he's here, <laughs> we can appreciate <laughs> his wisdom. Because if there's oh. one thing that he's willing to share, it's wisdom. And boy, let me tell you something. When you're 90,000 90, years old, mm-hmm. uh uh, your wisdom comes from a different time. <laughs> yeah, it's one reason why you shouldn't listen to to your elders, right? Right. Like, yeah. This is they, proof positive. Age does not equal wisdom. 
let's hear what he has to say. This first one comes from Jessica, who says, Lately, I've been seeing my husband liking photos of other women on social media and complimenting them on their looks. He's telling them things he wouldn't dare say to a woman in front of me. This has been tearing me apart and makes me feel like I'm not good enough for him. It also makes me feel as if he's cheating on me by doing this. Am I wrong for feeling this way? Am I overreacting? I've been looking for a time to confront him about it, but I just can't seem to find a way to tell him. What do you suggest I do? Uh, I suggest the best thing to do is to be so loving he cannot overcome the amount of love you're going to give him. Just be a wonderful wife. And uh, the fact that he's a man and he appreciates beauty is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, that's, that's, that's the male uh, of where they are. They, they just uh, appreciate beauty. But you be the one, you're all, you've got the inside track. So you be so loving, he ain't about to leave you and go look at somebody else. Okay? But do you think it's okay if he's telling them things online that he wouldn't say to a woman in well, front of I, her? I don't know what he's saying to them online, but well. may, maybe he and his wife don't share the intimacy they need. And they, they need to, she needs to, look, you make him a man, you build him up, make him feel so good to be with you that he wouldn't think of anybody else. That's the way you do it. You've got the inside track. I remember playing football a long time ago. I missed a block and the coach jumped all over me. I said, well, he got past me. He said, you had the angle on him, you know. You've got the angle on them, honey. You use it. You're, the, you're there every night. It's your deal. Make it work, all right? It's your fault. <laughs> Just look, look. I'm going to use a sports metaphor so that you are sure to understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have no idea Just... what he was talking about. <laughs> I think it's a... Wow. Just... Just wife him better, yeah, and you'll be all right. Oh my God, that is that is really solid. No, no mention whatsoever of communication with the man. No, like that that would be idiotic. Right? Don't talk to him about it. Yeah, just uh, go have sex with him. Make a better meal, man. <laughs> just don't don't bug him when he's on his L Xbox. Lure him in with your feminine with wiles. Your <laughs> yeah. Oh, that that Marion Gordon Robertson. I know. Pat, yeah. Pat. His his name is not Pat, everyone. It's not Patrick. He's a it's liar. A, it's all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, oh my gosh. He's... And I love the, the his, his his helper lady like trying to steer him back. No. She's no, don't so give hard. Him, <laughs> do not give that advice. This is not okay what this guy's doing. Uh, By the way, gentlemen, fellas, guys, Stop complimenting women about their their looks online. It's just gross. If that's all you're saying to anybody online, to any women online, you're gross. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just. That's that's just a uh, public service announcement. Oh, good from Thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The more you know. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Um, oh goodness gracious. Oh how I'm gonna oh, miss Lord. and not miss Pat Robertson. When Mostly he dies, not miss, but. He's he's gonna make it. I am convinced, just because of how 2020 is, uh -huh. that he's gonna make it through this year. <laughs> he couldn't possibly just because, give us that gift. No, <laughs> yeah, this the, 2020 is far too shitty for us to be able to celebrate <laughs> anything like the loss of his insanity. Actually, I wouldn't celebrate. The truth is, he does such wonderful things for our show by being such a weirdo. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, we had some folks write into us, uh, which I love, and uh, we'll start with Alistair, who wrote in and said, Hey, Frank and Dan, still loving the podcast. Keep up the good work. I wanted to ask you about something I heard on episode 448. Okay. Uh, you were having fun with the ex-Mormon lady who was giving advice on how to be a better atheist. Mm. Techni technically, I don't think she ever said she was an atheist, but yeah. how to be a better ex-Mormon. Anyway, uh, your, your conversation led... To the Mormon alternatives to coffee and tea, soft drinks. You then pivoted to non-sugar-based drinks with aspartame. I know that aspartame is dangerous to a very small number of people. That's why they must write it extra large on the label. But I was confused by the, quote, nasty aspartame-laden soda comment. 
Her comment meant, uh, mentioned drinking coffee with so much sugar and cream, no one else would consider it healthy. I'm worried she might be right and you are wrong. Uh, and Alistair goes on to, to provide some, some links to some things about, you know, uh, how many people die of sugar, sugary drinks a year and, oh. uh, you know, just, just all of that sort of thing. And, and, uh, and mentions that, uh, he, he says, I've looked all over the internet and just can't find anything negative about aspartame, let alone that it might or ever has killed anyone. Uh, hmm. so I, I don't, I don't remember who said this. You said it. If it was me, <laughs> then let me let me explain something to you. I remember you saying it. I was like, because I do think that aspartame is nasty, only because of the taste. <laughs> I am, I cannot stand artificial sweeteners. Yeah, I I'm, fucking hate them. I agree. I, I think so, they taste horrible. But um, believe me, but, I, I was not making a health claim at the time. I'm glad you gave me the opportunity it, to I think clarify it did that. Kind of sound a little bit like a health claim. Oh no, yeah. not me. But I, but, uh, I am a hundred percent. I make no claims about that. I haven't done any research well, about. And here's the deal for me with her whole thing about, and maybe we didn't, and, and I know we didn't really say this at all, which is coffee doesn't have to be sweet, right? Like no. she's the one who's making it sweet. Coffee by itself, you know, however you, if maybe you drink it black, maybe you put a no. little bit of. Maybe put a little bit of sugar in it. Probably not the end of the world, right? Sweeten it up slightly. But I mean, yeah. she sounded like she's like just ladling in the sugar and cream. Did you watch? Did Did you watch the Tiger King? I did. Yeah. Okay. There's a moment on the Tiger King where the two people pull up to a McDonald's and they order coffee, uh -huh. and they're like. It was it was like in a show full of shocking moments. It was one of the most shocking for me because the guy was like, "Okay, I just need two two large coffee, one with eleven sugar and twelve cream." Or it was like <laughs> what? outrageous amount. Like by the time they got their coffee, there was only sugar and cream. Right, in it. right. I'm pretty sure it was. I was completely blown away by that. Yeah, yeah I I don't like sweet drinks at all. So. I, mm. you know, that's, that's horrifying. Um, yeah. yeah, I keep I, my iced tea, no sweetener, my coffee, okay. no sweetener, you know? All right. That's all. You, you're not, you're not a sweet tea guy. I don't like, uh, like overly sweet things. I do a little bit of sugar. I, I, I think moderation is fine. I'll, I'll have soda every now and then. I don't, mm. I don't drink it every day, but I, I'll have it every now and then. And I like it. I think when I but treat I'm not gonna myself, do, I'm not going to to a fast food uh, like like a crown burger. When I get a sure. crown burger, I get a Coke or a Diet Pep or Dr Pepper, right? Like yeah, like but it, I'm also having like a fast food burger, so yeah, a delicious fast food burger, but a fast food yeah. burger. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, uh, keeping it all in moderation is fine. Uh, but yes, my my comment about aspartame was solely because I want to vomit when i taste it that's all uh all right raymond wrote into us frank and dan a few weeks ago you discussed the national cathedral ah. however you did not mention the cool part there's a cool which, part yeah you, the, i i looked at a he, he raymond sent a picture of this thing and it's amazing it has a darth vader grotesque Really? Which is, it's like a gargoyle, but it doesn't drain water. Right, okay. I, it's kind of nutty. I think that's really cool. So, yes. Um, <laughs> Raymond goes on, but I will say the National Cathedral pales in comparison to the Mormon Temple here in D.C. It is spectacular. Really? Yeah, apparently. So, and I've heard this from multiple people, but, but Raymond says it well. Uh, there is a portion of the Beltway where it appears out of nowhere. It feels as if you're approaching the Emerald City in Oz. Well, Definitely worth looking up. The uh, the DC Temple it it looks it does look kind of otherworldly and stuff. Hmm. And apparent and I've heard that yes, you're just driving along on the Beltway, which is what they call a freeway. I don't know why they call it that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so, so suddenly it just blah there it is in front of you, uh -huh. and, and it's yeah. Huh. So anyway, thanks for writing in, uh, fellas. We really appreciate it. Do we have anyone to thank today? We do indeed. Um, we have a, 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 a gaggle 
<laughs> of uh, new new patrons oh. on Patreon. Well, gag um, away then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We've got uh, two new deacons. Well, Dan, we have my soul. Uh, Riddle me this, <laughs> and Anthony, uh, both new deacons. So thank you Wonderful. guys. Wonderful. Thank for you your so much. Uh, we also have one, two new teachers. Mm-hmm. Dan. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Genevieve and Cleopatra. Whoa. Mm. Whoa. Wow. And we have two new priests, uh, Coyote Stardust. <laughs> nice. And Sue. And Sue. Okay. And Sue. Okay. So thank you to uh, the six of you oh, uh, for your support. What these fine folk did, they went to Thank God I'm Atheist dot com and clicked on the support tab and followed it on over to patreon and signed up um and that's how you could do it too we're actually inching super close to our our big goal of going completely ad free so like we're just a, a handful of uh supporters away oh. at the moment so yeah. if you can if you could mosey on over we'd surely appreciate it and always we have our and as always we have our top donor our lord and savior to thank Davis! Amazing. Well, you guys are awesome. We sure do appreciate you. More show to come. Hey, Dan. Hey. I recently found out something. Um, the world is ending. <laughs> Yes, I, I, uh, you told me this. I didn't. Yeah, I, I mean, it feels <laughs> obvious at this moment in history, but <laughs> you're never sure that it's the end of the world yeah, until there, until some crackpot tells you. Yeah. Well, the latest crackpot du jour. Have you heard of that? Um, that uh, that that couple up in Idaho. That like um, it was like her kids and his and her his stepkids, right? So he's not right. But anyway, um, two 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 children that went missing, right? And then yeah. all of a sudden she's like in Hawaii, and Hiding. everybody's like, "Yeah, everybody's like, where what what the fuck's going on?" And right now they're uh, they've been arrested and they're facing um, uh, a bunch of charges. Murder doesn't seem to be on the list yet. They found the kids' bodies in it, her yard. They're working um, on it. They'll get it there. Yeah, I'm pretty they, sure. The, the, yeah, they're they're work. They've got some stuff uh, that 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 they can very easily uh, pin on them at the moment, and yeah. so they are. Uh, well, anyway, she uh, and I'm kind of blanking on her name at the moment. Oh um, my gosh! Yeah, uh, I, I am too. I never Daybell. Uh, oh. Valos. I think she's the Valos. Chad uh, Daybell. Val- yeah. And, and Lori Valo. We- yes. Uh, well, she, Lori, uh, is something of a prognosticator. And she Ooh. has predicted that the, 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 the Earth is coming to an end uh, just like next week on the 22nd. I think, <laughs> well, it was, right? looks like hers is. But yeah. apparently that's going to happen for all of us. <laughs> Yes, we're we're all included in oh. the end of her world. Um, I I and I'm not, I don't know if she specifically has linked this up to Neowise, uh, the comet oh. that, that appeared earlier this year that yeah. got the attention of some other religious groups. Um, there's uh, let me see, there was another group that is um saying that the earth is going to end in september like september one but they're also using the the, or they are definitely using the appearance of neowise uh as kind of like the sign in the heavens right sure when you think about this year we have pestilence yeah we have uh signs in the heavens right Um, oh we got it all baby we have an antichrist we have multiple <laughs> antichrists, right? Sure. Um, of course, like, you're referring to uh, Barack Obama, obviously. <laughs> clearly, clearly. Um, and so, like, I get that if this has been your thing, right? If if you have belonged to some sect or cult that uh, has been waiting, or, or mainstream religion, quite possibly, right. that has been waiting for the world to end and has been looking 
uh, for the signs and has jumped the gun a lot. A number and of often times. often and frequently, uh-huh. right? Um, I could really see this being your year, right? Like this it does feels... seem like the year where everything's just coming together for some sort of end of world cult to just like be like, yeah, this is this oh, is yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I don't know what it means. I want to know if this like, bandwagon is going to just heat up over time. It feels like, especially if you know, if please Donald Trump loses the election. Oh my God! This is going to like the the end of the universe predictions are going to get spicy. It's it's going to be it's going to be a, a he- thing. It's a it's hell a, of a thing. It's a hell of a thing. But it and we've talked about this before on the show, which is like this impulse that so many uh, religious types have. And to be honest, you also just see a, a fascination with it in. Uh, popular media right like there's the so idea many dis- of, of the disaster end of the world. movies and yeah exactly and and just like that it's all all gonna come crashing to an end and it's... and humanity is human beings clearly have some fascination with this it seems like we just as a species because you know we see end of the world predictions and end of the world like worries Mm-hmm. In all sorts of different uh, cultures, going back thousands of years, you know, it's it, it it seems to be a thing that humans just do a lot. We just feel like the world, like the entire world, is going to end. So I well, wonder what that's about. I mean, is it an extension of just sort of our general existential angst that we? all clearly suffer from right that, like you know that was that was one of the great inventions of humanity <laughs> the existential <laughs> angst we did a great job on that one <laughs> I, I feel like it is to do with that i feel like it's to do with this notion i don't know like every human being at some point in their life encounters something that rocks their sense of how the universe works or how the world works Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and I think our listeners can can identify with that more than most because a lot of our listeners left a religion that Mm -hmm. was terrifying to leave or, you know, or 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 had had to deal with the fallout of that sort of Mm -hmm. momentous. It was uh, probably wonderful to leave. (laughs) Well, yeah, but like (laughs) the. There's there's but a the, lot of the fallout. Yeah, yeah. No, there's I a lot of mean. negative stuff that can go. That doesn't necessarily, but can go along with that. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I but I feel like maybe the human psyche, it, just one of the ways that it deals with loss or 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 massive change or you know going back, maybe you know a famine or the crops not coming in or the rains not coming when they needed to. It's it, I mean, that had to feel cataclysmic. You know what I mean? Right. Well, and doesn't it feel a little bit better um, to not be alone in destruction, right? So, like, if your world sucks, right, um, and, and you're facing doom and uh, calamity, isn't right. it, don't you just want to have everybody else along for the ride <laughs> right just <laughs> you guys have to do this too this isn't yeah. just my apocalypse this is everybody's it's, it's not just all... my shitty life <laughs> well i mean it's the guy on the airplane right it's the yeah. i'm going to kill us all if you right. don't believe in black jesus it's it, if i'm going down yeah then then it can't just be me it's got to be the whole the whole kit and caboodle yeah I, well, I mean, that works with like most people's sense of self, right? Like, right. That that <laughs> everybody is their own center of their universe. Well, right? and that's appropriate. It gets a little out of control when you get narcissists like Donald Trump, who mm-hmm. like who can't imagine that the world care doesn't care about his feelings that the whole world doesn't <laughs> care more about what's going on inside of him than what's going on in the rest of the country yeah. and beyond. So I don't know. It's a, uh, I just feel like 
the end of the world it it maybe there's something to this idea that when when a lot of end of the world predictions are happening it says something about the current sort of zeitgeist it says something about how humans are feeling in our culture right now you know what i mean yeah i mean yes i completely <laughs> completely know what you mean about the fact that i don't know maybe it would just be nice <laughs> <laughs> right if if a if a comet came and just knocked us all out like just, it would almost just be for our own good just and take care of business comet for come on this this part of the galaxy like we don't want to be a multi-planet like species <laughs> I, i'm sorry no we want to be a multi-planet species the galaxy does not want us to be a multi-planet species because we suck at all of we're, it we're bad we're at just this. we're just shitty oh my god <laughs> We have such a hard time getting along with each other. We have such a, like, we're so, um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it, I'm, I'm reading a book right now called yeah. Fantasyland uh, by a guy named Kurt Anderson. And it's actually, it's a brilliant sort of explication of why America is that way. Why, like, if oh, yeah. any of you are foreign listeners and want, and want like sort of a, a deep dive into why are they like that? <laughs> it's a really it's <laughs> it's a really good one. I I highly recommend it. But yeah, I mean, like, there's nothing more American than everybody. You know, it's it's this this idea. It's why Mormonism is kind of the perfect American thing, and why the why Mormons defying their own religion to not wear masks makes some sense. Because everyone in America thinks that they've got it figured out. Every everybody in America thinks that their their opinion is just as valid as anybody else's, regardless of how uninformed it is, regardless of how little they've done to to earn that opinion. It's just as valid as everybody else's here in America. So everybody's everybody's downfall is also there uh is also like if you personally are gonna are going through upheaval might as well be the end of the world <laughs> yeah misery loves company right i guess so well mm -hmm. kids uh if you have anything you'd like to add to this please write into us podcast at thank god i'm atheist.com or call and leave a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGIAtheist, and click on that like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It is a closed group, but we will let you in. Also find us on Twitter at TGIAtheist. Speaking of social media, thanks for everybody that helps us out there. And a big thanks goes out to the Red Rock Hot Club and to Gordon Johnston for the use of their music. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. We sure do appreciate you. Bye-bye.